Hey, we're here at the Road to Black podcast, episode 44. I'm here with my man, Wes. So, you know, my name's Paul Manganaro. Uh, my, co- my co-host right here is uh, Wesley Reed, Dr. Wesley Reed. He runs a, basically a physio company. So he's on Instagram, the BJJ Physio. Um, you guys know him. If you've listened here, we've been 44 episodes in. I hope so. I hope you guys, I know some of you have reached out for some of his services. Today we want to talk about um, some of the, the latest and greatest that Wes is doing. He works with primarily only jiu-jitsu athletes now, I believe. And um, so I really wanted, versus us just kind of chatting about what we do, we're both entrepreneurs, we both have businesses, you've heard that before, versus just spending a couple of minutes here or there, we're going to kind of do a deep dive into something Wes talked about briefly in the last episode or two is some of the new programming he's doing and some of the new software. So I'm personally looking to get some more wearable tech. I'm trying to like move into that direction more. I'm waiting for the new Apple Watch to come out just because I want to have some kind of wearable baseline for my own health. And But I saw one of our friends post something, a nice little wearable that you sent him, hooked him up with. Let's... Uh, just welcome in Wes right now. He's going to tell us a little about the program and what he's been working with some of his athletes with. Uh, what's it called? What's the What's the software called? The software that I am using right now is called Morpheus. Morpheus. Yeah. So it's. Um, How are you doing, I, Wes? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Um, <laughs> and put man, you right on the spot. Yeah, put me right on it. No, that's good. Uh, I'm doing awesome. I'm training really well right now. I'm. Uh, you know, this is the stuff that we're going to talk about. Is I mean, I'm. I believe in it. Um, yeah. I'm using it for myself. I have, I have an athlete um, who has come to me a couple of months ago, uh, and he's doing. I think he's doing Nogi Worlds next month. He trains at a really high level school, and I, I mean, I talked to him today. Yeah, and he's like, the expectation right now for them is they need to be rolling at a hundred percent. And doing at least three comp classes and he's like my cardio has never been better he told me today he was like this is probably the best that i've ever trained oh great and it's like you know and a lot of this is the style of training that i'm, I'm programming and um, also some of the tech that that we use so um it's pretty innovative stuff and i'm excited to see this type of stuff enter the jujitsu realm mm-hmm. um if anybody's listened or seen my Instagram, I've said it periodically throughout the history is that I think that jujitsu programming and the way that we train for competition is severely lacking. And I think that, um, I think we're really far behind to be quite honest. You look at every other sport, every other, especially pro sports. I mean, jujitsu is turning into a pro. It's turning into a pro environment. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, we have amateur stuff, which this tech that I use is not expensive. I mean, it, everybody can, it's it's certainly affordable. Um, but the way that we train and the way that a lot of these, uh, pr- if you look at the way that the pros do it and any, any other major sport, I mean, they're using all kinds of technology just like this. And I'm excited mm-hmm. to see it come to the jiu-jitsu arena and nobody's really doing this quite yet um there's a few other people out there that i know that are doing it for um mma which is where the guy that i've done all this training with he has he trained uh mighty mouse johnson which uh if you think about when he was training and he was fighting mma i mean he had so many titled i think he's i don't know if he still does he's still fighting too. He's still he's still fighting, but he also in the UFC for a long time had the most title defenses. Yeah. Uh, oh, he's one well. of the goats. He's one of the goats. He's sure. he's a, he's a Hall of Famer for yeah. sure. Um, so anyway, he's he considered was, by many one of the best ever. For sure, and there's no doubt pound, about it. Yeah. And the thing was, is this guy uh, he didn't. I know. For, so to go into some of his stuff, I know for a fact he didn't have hard cuts on his his mm-hmm. training. He he wasn't cutting twenty and thirty pounds the day of the, the day of, or the week of. He his if you remember how he fought, 
he had a, what seemed to be an unlimited gas tank. And that was one of the things that made him so special is that the guy would just outpace mm-hmm. people and just he just piece people up at that um, weight at that weight at that weight that's saying something where every, all those light guys have gas tanks but he yeah. had something there was something different in, in what he was doing and the guy that I trained with uh, that I've taken a lot of this coursework with and trained with I did a three day live event with him just this week um, he was using all this tech with him mm-hmm. back when he was do- dominating the UFC what was his partner what was his role in that camp he was his strength and conditioning coach. Oh, okay. So he wasn't doing the skills I know who development. You're talking about. Yeah, his name is Joel Jameson. Uh, yeah. I don't think there's anybody on the planet that knows more about cardio than Joel Jameson. Yeah. He's done. He's worked with uh, GSP. He's worked with yeah. Mighty Mouse Johnson. I mean, the who's who. He's worked with a bunch of pros in different sports, um, but he's primarily known for his work in MMA, and he was using a lot of these same techniques and a lot of the same tech that the, the, a lot of this stuff actually this stuff's fairly new uh for even for him he's he's taken a lot of this stuff and produced his own kind of way of putting it mm-hmm. all together but um i'm sure it's i'm sure every it's like every piece of tech right it's it's evolving every single year yep you know yep. like they're just probably at the cusp of some of this getting athletes to use this stuff and it's just it's going to be i mean we're, it's never going to go backwards, this whole realm. of. No, I don't think it is. It, it'll be stuff where it's embedded in us, you know, the tech. It'll be embedded in us someday. Some If, it, if that doesn't as already exist, I don't know. I'm sure it does, actually. It's probably yeah. things you can get embedded in you. But um, it's cool to see where it's going. It's just a matter of getting it out to, with jiu-jitsu especially, it's like MMA. Look how far MMA's come in the last 20 years. And really with that stuff like that, the high caliber training, you're talking like, you know, 20, 15 years max yeah. in MMA. It's been the last 15 years where the training has really been the GSP type training, you know, yeah. specialized in. I mean, he was one of the ones that really developed that. You remember when? Oh, yeah. Everyone else was training. They would be in their own camp. They'd be doing their own thing. And GSP is like. He's training over here in Montreal. He's training in New York. He's specializing. He's using mm-hmm. all the latest and greatest tech. He's investing a lot of money in his body and his physicality, and it paid off. I mean, but he was – think about it when GSP was killing it. They they weren't all cut from the same cloth in terms of – nowadays you see many more of those high-level – Yeah. Uh, you and, know, guys that are more fo- – the, the Performance Institute, the UFC Performance Institute. For sure. Yeah. Like now uh, fighters are offered these things, all this high tech recovery and all this stuff where GSP was at the forefront. Like, Cause I used, I was a huge MMA fan during his reign and people forget, like he was just had cut above everyone else. You know, the guys he was fighting I and mean, it was just like, in terms of that, you look at the guy sure. in terms of the yeah. athleticism. And, and, and that was still the day where guys were still punching each other's brains in until yeah, exactly. They couldn't go anymore yeah. until they couldn't go anymore. A lot of those guys were going in already yeah. concussed. Oh yeah, into into the ring, you know, and and to kind of dive into the stuff that we're talking about. I mean, concussions they will destroy your ability to recover, to be cognitively available and function cognitively. Mm-hmm. I mean, they they take all that away. They will put you in a state of brain fog. You 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 can't do when you're concussed. Even, you know, they say like a, a, about after 30 days, things should start to resolve. After 30 days, there's, um, it becomes a lot more complicated to resolve for concussions to resolve. And they call it, uh, I think it's like prolonged concussive syndrome or something mm-hmm. like that, where it, be, it just becomes harder to, uh, to manage. Right. Um, and so the, there's, 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 a, there's specialists that, that uh, specialize in even rehabbing people from concussions. Oh yeah, but the, the 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 point is that uh, you know GSP was smart, and same with Mighty Mouse Johnson. These guys were smart in the way that they were yeah. trained, and they were uh, they were not working themselves into the grave before yeah. they even stepped into the ring. And that's 
um, to tie this That's back really into, it, to yeah. jujitsu. I mean, right? most of these guys, even to this day, are going to walk into the competition arena and they're already going to be feeling like shit. Yeah. They're going to be overtrained. They're going to be, um, and I'll explain that overtraining type. Yeah. People, a lot of, there's like all this debate is it overtraining and under recovering? And there's lots of different ideas on this but a lot of those guys i'm gonna i'm gonna keep it simple i'm gonna keep the verbiage simple i'm gonna use the term overtraining a lot of these guys are overtrained and they're already in a a physiological state of of stress and fatigue and they're already in a recovery debt and they're not going to be able to they're it's going to affect people's a tremendous amount of athletes (laughs) in jujitsu really I mean, that's how it almost seems like that. I don't know the number, but that would seem like 90%. Most of them. Yeah. Like, they're training their asses off, destroy. Like, because you training intensifies typically leading yeah. up to a tournament. I mean, you got to get the hard rounds in, you got to get the rounds in, you got to get the, the time on the mat, the cardio. And, you know, I'm sure there's guys out there, guys and gals that, do it right and take the proper amount of time off and really let your body recover and maybe do some mental training before. But man, it's tough because you get in that flow state with jujitsu and sure other sports, you want to keep that going, even though it's at a detriment to your body and you in really your performance capability, you know, yeah, you're, you're in the last week and you're like, I'm going to train this week, but I'll take a couple days off before the tournament. That's what usually what people do. Totally. A, day, a day or two, but up until then you're going hard. Well, mm-hmm. well how much recovering are you really doing in that two days? Very especially, little. especially if you're like most of us, some bank you're or most guys are going into stuff banged up. Yeah, it, especially if you're competing all the time. Yeah, you know this isn't like a UFC where you have two fights in a year. Yeah, and you have six months to do what you want. Most guys, like in the amateur ranks or even the pros in jujitsu, I would say in the amateur ranks. A hundred percent guys that are competing IBJJF and stuff at a serious level. They're trying to go to all the main events once a month, mm-hmm. at least usually. Yeah. Um, you know, the pros, maybe not so much. They're still training hard, but you know, you're not seeing Gordon Ryan fight even when he was fighting all the time. It wasn't every month, you know? Yeah. So it's just hard to say, but I'm saying even recreational athletes, amateur athletes, probably even more so because, they don't that, and that's what I was going with. Like MMA, it's 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 somewhat new, a new sport. So now it's taken like thirty years, and since you know whatever it is, it was really twenty years of modern MMA. I For mean, sure. two thousand, yeah. You know, I mean, even like the Chuck Liddell days were like two thousand five. So maybe two, th- you know, maybe fifteen yeah. to twenty years in modern MMA, um, and. The, the tech and all that has gotten, it's just within the last five or 10 years that's become available just to the pros. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. So it's almost like, a, as you know, with everything, it like it's like a trickle down effect. When do the amateurs have the time, have the ability to pay for these things, have the, the knowledge and the wherewithal to even use them? You know, as an amateur athlete, these people don't really have, and this is where I'm going with this, they don't have someone, they don't have a camp. So I don't have somebody focusing all that time, but that's exactly where you come in. That's right. And that's, that's I mean, that this literally what we're looking yeah, at is you're filling sure. this gap that is really going to exist where amateurs can now have a personal assistant in their pocket that's teaching and helping with this stuff. That's why I think it's just so promising. And it's going to, there's going to be a lot, the guy that you're talking about with MMA, mm-hmm. with, with what's his name? Uh, Mighty Mouse, that guy, Joel, Joel name? Jameson. That guy was you before, right? I mean, he was just a guy that has these awesome programs and then he's working with athletes. In his case, which could be your case in six months from now, working with the best in the world. Yeah. Oh, that's, so that's, that's why. It, we funny. have to that's point the, that out. Yes, we have to point that out is like, that's the biggest, I think you would probably agree, is the biggest roadblock is getting the stuff to the people. Mm-hmm. The, the athletes aren't going to go and talk to the vendor and go do the research on their own. They need a coach that knows what the hell they're doing. That's had the training like you that's went through this and understands what it's going to do for you. And then 
we'll see what athletes are serious and want to utilize this in their training. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, uh, even there's even problems with, you know, some of this tech is, is great, but, and, and a lot of this data, you can have all the data in the world, but if you don't know how to interpret it, if you don't know what you're looking at, it's just numbers, it's just stuff, you know? And, and that's even, even with some of these, uh, wearable technology that we have, like, um, I've tried Whoop. I've tried BioStrap. Let's take both of those, for instance, Whoop and BioStrap. Um, some of the stuff that I'll talk about is heart rate variability, which is a lot of why that stuff, um, it's, it's really what that stuff tracks is heart rate variability. It gives an HRV gives a nice little hook, look under the hood as to like what's going on and using uh, what is, it measures the, di- the distance between your heartbeats is essentially what it is. But um, it, it's measuring the amount of stress and those um, devices, Whoop and BioStrap and Aura Ring, um, they're taking and sampling this data at random times throughout the day. And that's one of the things where a lot of this data gets really noisy because your heart rate variability, which is when we are, we're, we're measuring the level of stress that you're under, um, that's going to change whether if you're in the morning when you first wake up, that's going to change if you just looked at the 24-hour news cycle, that's going to change if you just got done with a workout, that's going to change if you're in bed asleep. So this, these wearable techs where they're constantly pinging your, your heart rate variability, even that stuff is not great because it, it's not an accurate reflection of your true stress levels does that make sense so it's it's taking things throughout the day but it's not necessarily a standardized way to do it so that's one of the things about this system that i use you have it you take it in the morning you standardize it that way you know exactly where you're at um you it gives when things are standardized it gives you things that it gives you a baseline and it gives you things to compare things to yeah so you know i take it in the mornings this is my part of my recovery routine so my it, it get, calculates a recovery score. I know that I had a good night's sleep last night or I had a rough night's sleep last night. This is the amount of stress I'm under. Um, and it gives you a nice standardized way so that whenever you start tracking your changes through your camp and you do things ev- the same way every day, you can you can literally see what you should see is a nice sinusoidal wave where uh, for the camera it should go up and then it should go down and then it should go up and it should go down because what that's saying is your HRV goes down after a workout and I'll, I'll, I should go through eight, what exactly what HRV is before I go into this um, and I'll come back to this point but you, sh- it should, you should put yourself under stress, your HRV is going to drop and then over a day or two, you should see your recovery score come back up. So you should be able to recover. So you should see this nice up and down wave throughout your training camp of add stress, recover. Add more stress, recover better. Add more stress, recover better. So you're, this is really how you prevent plateaus and, and how to not go into your competition day feeling like trash. Right, because so, you can manage those waves you, exactly, once you understand you, them and yeah. what they're correlated to. Right, and you can you can use that information to track or to make training day decisions. So if I know, like, man, I, I've, I'm having, I've trained, you know, four days hard right in a row, and my I'm not seeing this up and down stress recovery, stress recovery, stress recovery. I'm just seeing it hit hit the shitter Mm -hmm. um then you know like well i'm especially and this is a common thing i see with athletes especially jujitsu athletes they train hard throughout the whole week they go what is it maybe let's just take an arbitrary tuesday wednesday thursday friday they're going hard their recovery scores are going like this they're going into the can they take two days off over the weekend where they do basically nothing and if you took an HRV, they still wouldn't be recovered because they were so far in an in an energy deficit mm-hmm. that now they've started Monday, their next training week, already in 
a state of fatigue. So they're less than what they were starting off, and then they're going to go through that exact same thing. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah. So they're putting themselves there. Every week uh, you're starting a, a less at and a less lower level. baseline. Yeah. Yeah. So that's where some of this wearable technology and how you can take some of this stuff can really be a benefit because it, you can make training day decisions on – I'm not saying do, you don't go to the gym or you don't even work out. You change your workout. It, you change your workout. Yeah. So um, I was talking to this one of my guys here in the in my training group about this. There's a lot of different ways that you can do that. So you can do I call them rebound workouts or high performance recovery workouts, um, where you can ping. You can basically get a little bit of sympathetic. So for people that don't know what it is, the sympathetic nervous system is fight or flight or flight, fight or flight system. Your parasympathetic system is rest and digest. And you want to be, your recovery is along the parasympathetic pipeline and your, and your, your training is on the sympathetic pipeline. So, uh, and they basically work like a, Uh, like a knob so it's not one is on and one is off it's which one is on more or which one is on less so as you turn one up you turn the as you train more you're turning the the knob towards the sympathetic dial and then you need to be able to turn that dial back down to parasympathetic to recover but if you're always turning that dial up then you never turn that get to turn that dial back down so um, i was talking to um one of the guys in here about how to design some of these, uh, I call them rebound or high performance recovery workouts where you kind of can ping the sympathetic just lightly and you can actually get a rebound into the parasympathetic state if you do it right. So you have to have the dose right and you have to get a nice cool down afterwards. So you should feel after at the end of your workout, like you should feel like, the same as you walked into the gym. So you have to cool your heart rate down under a hundred. So mm-hmm. when your heart rate's over a hundred, you're starting, you are in a sympathetic state. So you have to, you kind of ping that sympathetic s- system for a little bit, and then you bring your heart rate down below, and then you should start seeing your, it'll be, it's a nice rebound mm-hmm. method to get you out of that cycle. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. So, but you can only do this because you're measuring everything. You can only see, you'd only know if the dose is right if you're measuring it. Yeah. So, so you, um, you, you're talking very specific workouts to really fine tune that. Where I've heard guys talk about it before in terms of some of this wearable uh, tech and measuring throughout tri- MMA guys. You know, I'll hear a guy be like, I can't remember who it was, but he was talking about. He was using a lot of this more technology stuff where they're really measuring everything he was doing. It might have been Chad Mendez. It's a recent podcast I heard. But uh, they basically, they're talking about the whole this whole thing. And if you wake up and you, you're in that state, for him, this person, it was more, it was like, okay, I'm not doing jujitsu and wrestling today. I'm going to go do a light hike or a hill climb or yep. something that, you know, that's less intensive. So they had it dialed in for what they need. Their needs were same thing. It's like no active recovery day today. And he was talking as a fighter. If I, if I'm not mistaken, I believe he was kind of talking about just the struggle of that alone. Mm-hmm. And that's how, you know, that's another thing is to, to manage your client. If you're the coach and if you're out there and you want to use something like this, you have to manage your own ego and say, as much as I want to go get my roles in today, today's not the day to do it. That, I yeah. think, is going to be the hardest thing to change is the everyday jujitsu athlete's passion to train all the time and want to roll. So, and that's the same with probably MMA too. You know, it, it's really just a personal, you have to look inside yourself and say, do I trust the data? Is this in the longer run going to benefit me? Is it going to make me perform better? I think in some cases, and that's obviously what you're going to have to do, not you, but that's what you do have to do is show that, you know, right? You have to show that this is why we're going to take a rest day today because it's going to bring you back up to this level before your tournament. 
yada, 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 you know. But yep. I'm sure you already know that. For some people, that'll be the hard sell is like, the, 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 you know, the software says you shouldn't train today or maybe not even a couple, you know, maybe you should only train two times this week or something like that where it's like, oh, but at least it'll open people's eyes to, you know, to really understand what and find the levels that they should be at of training, you know, and, well, here, consistency. Here's, here's the other piece of that training, though, is that a lot of people that when they're in these really bad recovery states. They go in and they say, man, I had a hard workout. And it's not that they had a hard workout. It's just the the perception that they hard, had a hard <laughs> workout is there because they had no gas. It's hard for that their they, particular they push. Yeah, their, they their can't circumstance. Push. Yep. Because – and so for them – I was just talking to you about that before today, before we yeah. jumped on here. It's like, yeah, I today was the first time I got a couple rolls in, but it wasn't – you know, for me, it was training hard under my condition, you know, being injured. And, but I'm, I sat there and I told you, I was like, I can't wait till I'm 100%, like where I can really yeah. put the get, you know. But that's exactly what it is. It's so like, that's what it is. And it's like, well, you know, and, and the thing is, is, uh, you know, I think of things in terms of, of what, you know, take that same athlete, that same circumstance. He shows up. He wants to go hard when he's in a poor recovery state. Now let's look at what the cost of that training session was the cost of that training session is he's now further he's he's now further into a recovery debt that it's going to take him longer to get out of yeah. does that make sense mm-hmm. and so now he's likely going to start monday his next training cycle in a state of fatigue when oh, all he had to do yeah. was go and just you know i'm not you know i'm not one to take someone off the mats and but go and uh, you know maybe don't roll. Just do the drilling. Just get your heart rate up a little bit. You can use you know this tech that I use is is very unobtrusive. I mean it is it's tiny. Yeah. Um, so you know it's it's one of those things where um, those workouts, those decisions that people make, where they're already in a bad state and then they go they go try to push hard and this is the classic i'm just gonna outwork everybody type mentality i'm just gonna like i'm just gonna grind i'm just gonna grind through it that has those workouts have a cost an energy cost to them and that debt gets paid one way or another whether it's through uh injury um most times through injury i mean injuries happen when we're under fatigue most times uh, like big injuries happen when we're fatigued, and so um, and so to 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 go back a little bit, I'm gonna I want to dive a little bit into what is heart rate variability and mm-hmm. and why it's because I've gone a lot into this stuff and I want to really dive into what it is that we're measuring here. Right. Um, so heart rate variability. A lot of people think of the heart as uh, a metronome. It beats the same boom 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 boom, and the heart is not a metronome. Um, there are small little variances between each beat. So, and that's what we're measuring. So, um, to put it in scientific terms, we're putting, we're measuring the R, what's called an R interval, which is just one beat to the other. And you measure the distance and then you take that duration over time. Uh, the, the system that I use is I think two and a half minutes. So it's, I, when I take mine in the morning, it's literally, I just lay there for two and a half minutes and let it do its thing and then it takes an average of those variances and it cal- does a calculation er- little there's different ways to calculate this different apps do different you know whoop i think it has some sort of they use theirs and biostrap has theirs what i use has uh my ha- ha- what the morpheus system has theirs mm-hmm. um none of them are more accurate than the other there's just different ways to to derive the data so um, and then it spits out this score. So why this is important is, um, you're measuring the amount of stress that you're under. So you're measuring sympathetic and parasympathetic states. So when you have a higher heart rate variability, meaning there's more variability between those beats, you are more into you're you're shifting more energy into a, a parasympathetic state, which is recovery and 
repair and things like that, which is good. You want to be in a less stressed state. Mm -hmm. Um, If you take, uh, if you, if you don't see, if you see a low heart rate variability, uh, then that means you're shifting energy more into, to sympathetic. If you're shifting more towards sympathetic, that means you're spending less time recovering and doing your body repairing and doing the things that it needs to do from the training stress that you've just been under. Um, so that's why that matters. And there's some things like, so there's been a lot of studies done on HRV. Um, HRV, I've, I've written down a couple things here. HRV is correlated to uh, risk of death from cardiovascular disease, cardiova- uh, cardiovascular health, cognitive function, insulin sensitivity, inflammatory markers, visceral fat. Um, it's an overall marker for aerobic fitness. Uh, and for overall life expectancy, so there's a lot of di- there's a lot of studies that are uh, have been done. In fact, they did one uh, with elite warfighters where they took these different scores between um, these elite warfighters going through their survival schools, and what they found is that these uh, the guys that made it all the way through these schools had a higher HRV. I, like I wrote this down because I've read the study. They had a higher, uh, they had a higher HRV when they were at rest, and they had a lower HRV when they were under stress. So what does that tell us? That these guys that got through these schools were able to manage their stress better than the guys who didn't. So um, they some they, these guys perform better have, too. They they perform better, and that's right. why they get through the school. So they they are able to control their levels of stress and turn somehow they are better at turning on and off their parasympathetic states whenever they need to. And that's what, that's ultimately what we all want to be like, because if, you know, I use this through heart rate monitoring and things like that, even in my own training, you know, when you get under a state of stress, what, what, what happens to your heart rate? It jumps up. Mm -hmm. So if you can, have a signal if you are already in tune to what your heart rate is doing constantly um you're 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 automatically better at bringing your heart rate down getting back into a yeah. go from a sympathetic to a parasympathetic state and and then managing that stress so um lastly stress is stress so whether it's training stress life stress it it's it's a it signals cortisol Mm-hmm. all of the the stress response so that's why this is important when, especially when we jump into to tie this into jiu-jitsu this is important when we're when we're going into competitions when we're training on a daily basis because this training stress um it leads to fatigue it leads to injury or it can lead to injury and it's important for us to be able to to, to just know where we're at as far as stress recovery and to be able to manage our workloads on a daily yeah. basis based on on those types of things and and tech being able to see it is a great way to yeah. spark behavior change to be quite honest yeah it's just getting used to the tech and getting understanding the data i'm sure there's like a a burning in period being accepting of it you know being accepting that you're going to change your training and your recovery um, but once you have it, I think it's invaluable, right? I mean, it's like once you have, once you understand, you know, I don't know how, and that's what I want to ask you next, but once you get into the program and you're doing it, it'd be great to know like exactly, You, I guess over time you would just get more and more dialed in on what, mm-hmm. it's like anything you're managing with your health, you're getting more and more dialed in on what you can and can't do, how long it takes to recover from this versus that. And then start planning your training around it or, yep. or with it. Um, so either for yourself or like the athletes that you're working with, how does – walk me through like the whole thing. Like what do you – what's – what, you know, what are the barriers of entry and how hard is it to manage this and how do you have to – what do you have to do? Uh, man, so for my athletes, the people that I've got using this Morpheus system, I, so these, this tech, uh, I think it, I think it, it comes out. I think they're putting it on their website next month, I think. So all my athletes that are using this, I'm a, I'm a coach with Morpheus. So I, 
I just send it to them. Um, it's 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 pretty low barrier to be quite honest. It's it's a mm-hmm. really thin heart rate monitor and a, a wrist like a forearm band. So the first thing is wake up, take your HRV reading. I see all of this data in my coaching app. Mm-hmm. Um, so I so you do it through a Morpheus app. Yeah. So through Morpheus, so the athletes have a Morpheus app. Um, and so all of their workouts, they just, you just open the app, you go through your workouts, you close the app and it, it logs the data on, on your end and mine. Um, so, and then, you know, I see all that data come through and that's, that's really it. I mean, if you have two and a half minutes in the morning when you wake up to take your HRV and collect your recovery score and you can wear a chest strap yeah. whenever you work out um i've been wearing my chest strap in jiu-jitsu this this chest strap that i have now from morpheus is the thinnest chest strap they make the thinnest chest strap on the market and it also has um it also has memory so it if you lose connection it's constantly Still recording, recording and then it just uploads it whenever you're done that's dope. Whenever that connection comes back, so it's it's super cool. It's 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 really it's really high tech stuff. So do you um, wear that under your rash guard? I'm wearing it under my rash guard now. Yeah. So the only thing that I have, the only adjustment that I have to make, and I've I've never had a problem with it since uh, before I started doing this. But this was a suggestion that I got from um, the guys at Morpheus. Is you can wrap athletic tape around it, and just to make sure that the connection leads stay on on the the strap. And that's it. I mean, oh, okay. it's it's very, it's that that's not invasive really it. type it's thing. Very non invasive. Mm. Um, so, so you mentioned a wrist wearable plus a forearm. Yeah. yeah so it's so an optical. What, so there's three different ones, or they use for different two. things, or it's two. The, plus the, the chest yeah. strap. The, the chest strap and the forearm. That's it. The forearm okay. one, I leave. I leave it, and all my athletes, I tell everybody, leave it by your bedside. Just put it on your nightstand because the only thing that that's for is for taking HRV. That's it. You just put it on your forearm, boom, hit start, and two and a half minutes later in your app in Morpheus, yeah. it will it collects all that and it updates your recovery score. Is that thing cordless or does it have a cord on it? Yep. No, it's cordless. Nice. Yeah. It's, 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 and then uh, uh, what, did I see a wearable for a watch too? Or no? No. Well, so okay. that's actually the cool thing about Morpheus is that if you have activity tracking, and this is coming into the pillars, really what the pillars are of recovery. And so a lot of people think recovery is just doing nothing. Sleep is a big part of recovery, a huge yeah. part of recovery. So is activity. So is nutrition. So is hydration. Mm-hmm. So is all, there's a lot of different factors, right? So uh, if you have an Apple Watch or you have a Garmin or you have a, uh, maybe a Samsung watch that uses Google, Google Fit or whatever it is. Yeah. Um, I don't have any of those smart watches, but my phone tracks my activity. So when it's in my pocket, I go for a walk with my dogs. All that, all that data syncs up with Morpheus and it just auto imports it. So oh, wow. you, don't, e- you nice. don't even have to do anything. It's constantly tracking through Google Fit is what I use if you have an Apple Watch. It can be your Apple Watch, yeah, and then it just sends that data back to Morpheus. You allow that connection to go through whenever you're setting it up. So you just get additional inputs, which creates better data in the end. Creates better yeah, decision so, making exactly. So so um, you know you can see a good you can see your HRV go up based on oh I went out for a, a walk with my dog and I got like an hour slow and low workout in, which is really great. Mm-hmm. You know I had really good activity throughout the day, so. Um, so you can see all these different factors start to really come together and give you a really accurate representation of what your physiology is happening. Like for me, like I say, it's, I get a good look at what's going on under the hood. Mm -hmm. I'm, it's legit. I'm looking at how much stress you're under, you're under with your heart. I'm looking at how much activity you have during the day. I look at how much sleep you get because one of the things that you, uh, you log your HRV. It gives you a three-question questionnaire. It's how much sleep did you get? What was the quality of the sleep? And how do you feel today? Uh, and how sore are you? So if four questions. So you just it's like one through five, yeah. I think it is. And um, 
that's it. So if you're, you know, so does that is it is it tracking that as an input or just a d- yeah, additional? So, so because yeah, wouldn't wouldn't like a smartwatch track your sleep and you utilize would. that better? Or and it's you, a possibility. Yeah, you can you can do that. It totally yeah. syncs up. But I see um, inside the Morpheus settings, you can. You can do you that know, stuff manually. Yeah, if you need exactly. To. It, yeah. It'll ask you how do you want to track your sleep? Okay. How do you want to track this? So that's nice. Yeah, it's awesome. So for me, I don't have an Apple Watch. I'm not tracking my sleep. Mm-hmm. What I'm using is a questionnaire of like, yeah, you know, how many hours did I get? And you know, I I go to bed at like some some days I go to bed at nine o'clock. You know, but I'm I'm tracking, you know, ha- usually half an hour, forty five minutes after because I I don't want to overestimate it. I got to get time to get to sleep, right? You know, and so I can. So it's it's know, a little rate. less uh, specific, maybe a little less specific. Yeah, but the great thing is, is that I know, you know, for some people, it's you know, on the uh, I don't have my phone on me. I, I try and go coming up to the screen on my data today, um, but what you can see on the on the very the the user interface is it gives you. How much sleep did you get? How much activity you had? Blah blah blah. So, you know, if you're constantly reporting, or maybe it's from your Apple Watch or a subjective report from like I do, if you're constantly getting five hours of sleep, six hours of sleep, you know, that's a great way. That's that's an e- something that you can make a change with. You know what I mean? So yeah. my recovery mm-hmm. score is low. I look at my I look at my uh, Morpheus, and I'm constantly getting five hours of sleep. Well, yeah, that's an easy. Then one. that's an e- that's an easy that's an easy one. That's an easy fix. Yeah. And really, that's how it should be. Is um, you know, you want the best bang for your buck. What's the easiest to fix? That's going to give you the best output. And mm-hmm. sleep's one of them. So uh, you know, I know I've got athletes in this platform where it's you know I'm looking at. You know, one day of six hours of sleep, <laughs> sleep's a big one that we all yeah. struggle with, you know, especially yeah. because we all, you know, it's super busy. easy to lay in bed. We're busy. It's, and then when you go to bed, it's like, ah, I want to catch up on some yeah. social media. You got your phone in front of you. And the next thing you know, an hour goes by and you're like, shit, man, I just lost an hour of sleep. Yeah. You know, and I still got to wake up at 530 in the morning to teach jujitsu or whatever mm-hmm. I got to do or train jujitsu. You know, so, I run out of time every day. You know, it's, sometimes it's, I like last night, I think last night I was like, Oh my God, it's like nine forty five already. And I knew in my mind, I still had to, a lot of stuff to do to get ready for today. You know, like and that was a weekend. Yeah. And I try to like get, I, I say I get a lot, but I mean, I've tried to at least get six hours, hopefully seven hours. But that's what I'm saying. Sometimes if you're not really tracking it, you just don't. You know what I mean? It doesn't it doesn't register as much. Yeah, I, I feel tired or something, or maybe I know it in the back of my mind it's not that great. But I think with the data, I'm a data driven guy too. So if you see that stuff and you're, fo- it's like everything, right? You're focused on it. You're well, you using, gamify it. Yeah, you're using the tech. You know exactly. It's hard to ignore. Right yeah. right now, I don't use it. So yeah, my my I have on my, my Apple phone on my iPhone. It says you know. It gives me a little, I have the nighttime thing where it, it sets my, it'll give me a little alert. It's night, it's bedtime. Like, you know, that's on my iPhone. You can set that where you tell it how many hours of sleep you want. And so it gives me a little reminder and I'm like, if I can get to bed before that reminder, that's great, you know? Yeah. But it's not like having all of this data and really wearing stuff and being super committed, which obviously is going to take some sacrifice for people to do, but the end result it's it's one of those things I said this to someone the other day it's like wouldn't it be and someday maybe our kids or our grandkids will have this I, I not someday I think 100% they will but in today's day and age wouldn't it make more we have so much information but the, we do not have a dashboard of the number one thing and that's our health if you really think about that all the data and bullshit we know about so and so or this or that we have so much information we can we all become historians on the internet. We, we know we're doctors, you know, there's, yep. you know what I mean? There's so much information on the internet and guess what we can't find a dashboard like a car has that tells us where we're at with our health. And this is, well, that's where this is going. But what I'm saying is the extreme someday 
you will have, whether it's embedded or something, but you'll open your phone and it'll tell you exactly these things. Yeah. And people will actually make decisions off that someday, I believe. Yeah. I and mean, it's going to improve people's lives tremendously and probably communities as, as a whole. But because it's right there in front of you and it's a reminder, and like you said, you gamify it, but it, it becomes more important. Yeah, totally. It's, I mean, we're not there yet, but I'm saying in future societies, that can, that can be the norm. Where No, that is the number one thing you look at every day. It is the number one focus. We just don't look at us. Like It's hard for us. I'm speaking for a lot of people, but I can't even find a good doctor I trust. Mm. Like, how do you even find, you know what I mean? It's like, it's strange how we're so disconnected. Like we have so much information, but yet again, we don't because we don't know how to make the decisions in in terms of our l- longevity with it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I, 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 I so I'm a, a firm believer in this, uh, especially, I mean, what's the most important muscle in your body? It's your fucking heart. Yeah, exactly. You know, you, you, we, there, we're not here without it. Mm-hmm. You know, your, your heart stops beating. You're done, you know? And, this H, HRV, I mean, I'm going to go through this one more time because I, I, I think it's hugely important. Risk, you know, risk of death from cardiovascular disease. Overall life expectancy, cognitive function, insulin sensitivity, inflammatory markers, visceral fat, overall aerobic fitness levels, which by the way is how you recover. Recovery is an aer- is an aerobic process. Markers of fatigue and performance. I mean, if mm-hmm. you could track one metric that's, for your that's life, a good one. yeah, and be able to have a good idea for where you're at. I mean, you can. There's studies that have taken norms of. They have like age specific norms for HRV, and so HRV drops throughout your your lifetime. But if you take um, you know, if you take the, if you take, look at all these different age populations and how they've normalized it, you take the top 10% of each one of those, it, it shows it like, so I, I wish I had the, the paper and the study. Um, but you take the top 10% of those and it's like, well, why are those people so, so high? And it's because they're training it. Yeah. You can literally train this. So one of the other things that I like about this system that I'm using is you can take this throughout. If you're doing your training the right way, not just, you know, you add stress, you recover, you add stress, you recover. And if you're working on specific things, the athletes that I put on this are people that come to me because they gassed out in a tournament, but what they're getting is something much more valuable. Uh, At the end of the day, like I send them this tech, they're done working with me, but they're going to have this technology. They're going to see it. They're going to know how to use it. Yeah. And what they're going to be able to see over an entire, what they should see over a month, six months, a year, you should see your resting heart rate drop. You should see your HRV score increase. You know, you should see these trends of these positive trends and you can use this in how you do your, how you train your heart, how you train the most important muscle in your body. Yeah. And it should be trained so can you i've talked to you about this offline a little bit i'm gonna have some testing on my heart done for some stuff i'm dealing with for like heart disease so is this something that like you're speaking to me right now i'm like (laughs) you know because thinking about my heart and training and doing all this and not really knowing is this like a is this type of are they at a point where I can start looking at that data and make um, exercise-based decisions on whether or not it's good for your heart? Like, do they have long-term studies Oh yeah, you, on, on measuring heart attack against different levels and stuff like that? I don't know about heart attack against different, like how... Um, Not with the training itself, but with like what you're your um resting heart rate that type of thing do they have studies where oh, yeah. they can tell like that's what i'm saying so this could help even that would give me a lot of information I mean, this is a this is a great way to look at overall heart health yeah. and yeah. this I is need why to get I'm on this i need to get so on this so 
This Sign me up. Why I'm like Sign me up. So, uh, so my 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 mom has a, a my my grandfather died of a massive heart, and that's the thing about men particularly. This is something I was talking to my buddy with. Men, when they have a heart attack, I mean, men are men have heart attacks. Yeah. They drop dead from heart attacks, um, and my grandfather was one of those. My grandfather had a massive heart attack, and he just yeah he was done. My mom has a congenital heart defect where there's a uh, she's got basically like a she call she calls it a hole in her heart. It is technically a hole in her heart, but she's got some cross flow between her two atriums from mm-hmm. when she was born. So there's a shunt in your heart whenever you're in the womb because you, your mom is shuttling right. oxygenated blood to the baby, right? But and ever when they cut that cord, there is a flap that shuts. It slams closed and then it heals so that it completes the entire circuit of the heart. Well, hers is what's called patent, meaning it's open. And so there's a little bit of cross flow between her two atriums. Not not the end of the world. Yeah. But for somebody that has a history of heart att- massive heart attacks in my family, mm-hmm. um, I'm, getting, I'm getting close to 40. It's like, well, I, now I really need to take better care of this yeah exactly and if i can use this as a way uh i'm using this for to manage my jujitsu training but i'm not gonna lie i'm using this stuff to track my overall heart health heart health yeah well i I need to jump on board because i'm in the same boat as you i told you i don't know if you remember but i i I don't know if i told you that but my grandfather died of a massive heart attack at 50 and my uncle, his son at 53, who's my mom's brother, and I'm 47. And I have plaque in my heart. So I've already gotten that determined. So it's actually part of being type 1 diabetic. It's a very sad and unfortunate uh, side effect from having type 1 diabetes and the fluctuation of blood sugar. That fluctuation puts it, it puts an extra toll, which is somewhat not even... I guess it's known why, but it's the fluctuation of my blood sugar over years puts more, adds plaque and stress to the heart. So these are things I'm just fine. I've been a type one diabetic for 20 years, but I've always managed the micro. Like I've always managed day to day. If my blood sugars are good, I'm good, you know, but I never, cause I'm almost, I'm almost scared. I've always not wanted to see the long term because long term isn't really good for type one diabetics. Traditionally, those are the guys and gals that lost feet, legs, went blind, died young. You know, medicine's a lot better now and testing. But the reality is, it's is uh, living with this kind of disease. You're just your blood sugars are always out of whack, and that puts a tremendous toll on your organs. And so, actually, I'm going tomorrow to get uh, a stress test. They're going to do two different back-to-back tests where I do uh, some type of exercise and they're going to scan me again. I've already gotten like a, a, what's called a calcium scan, calcium score. And I have like, for someone my age, I have a, a pretty, I would say more than moderate or amount of like plaque buildup. So I don't want to be the guy that's like, everyone's, oh, he looks healthy, you know, and he dropped out of a heart attack, you know, so... I, this is all I can do is be aware of it and get it tested and see if there's some type of medicine or, you know, if sometime in the future they have to do some kind of medical procedure, at least I know about it, you know, and I don't want to be mm-hmm. the guy with the, the widow maker heart attack, you know, cause that's what happened to two, two of my family members on my mom's side. Uh, my dad's side has nothing. So, you know, it's, it is something in the back of my mind, but like when I saw my heart doctor, he's like, everyone in America has plaque. <laughs> That was the first thing he said to me because I think he knew I was really concerned. Um, but it, it wasn't, it, he wasn't, he wasn't making light of it, but he just knows, he wanted me to know that it is, and it is, it's like an epidemic in America for sure. Like heart disease is one of the, is if not the number one, it's the number two killer. Yeah. Um, a lot of that is diet and exercise related, obviously, you know, it's our lifestyles. It are, it's really killing us. So, um, this having you even talked about it a little bit more today because i've been like i said before I, i'm trying to get i want to get the new apple watch i just need more data 
and they were they at some point maybe in the next version of the apple watch they're going to do like continuous blood glucose monitoring for mm-hmm. so for me having that all the time is amazing for as a diabetic you know because right now i have to do that manually i'm manually pricking my finger and taking blood throughout the day um so i've just noticed i need to pick it up in terms of Hey, do I really want to live long? I can either ignore this stuff and just go about my life or I can start dialing in and making better choices. Even training, you know, it's kind of a concern. It's definitely a concern of mine. Jiu-jitsu is not easy. Like it puts a tremendous amount of stress on you at times. And, um, you know, guys have had heart attacks on the mats. So, yep. you know, so not to bring this down to that level of like, you know, it's unfortunate, but you know, for most people are going to wear this stuff just to see your training, you know, and your, your recovery. Totally. Right. But I mean, I, for people I like me, it, it's going to take even more, make more meaningful impact, I think. Um, because right now I'm at a point where I kind of don't know, you know, so they're going to go do it. They're going to do like a, a stress test, some kind of treadmill test. Then they do like a scan. And then I do, I go in another day the following day and I just lay there for an hour and they do a scan and I guess they measure the differences between the two and they can f- at a very focused point f- look to see where the p- particular plaque buildup is because it's one thing if it's spread out everywhere it's another if it's like concentrated to one yeah. main part so that's yeah I'm actually going through that this week so this is really like perfect timing for me I, I honestly want to get started on something like this and I think it'll give me just a ton of information for all different reasons especially because I've been kind of injured for like the last year and and I uh, to be honest I don't feel optimized at all like this is probably the worst I've felt in a while just trying to recover from injuries and then trying to train here and there and then you know working a lot is a huge part of the stressors and yeah. right I mean not getting sleep, eating like shit sometimes, you know? So I think for me, especially having that type of thing, cause I've, I've done like some sleep wearables and stuff and I've tracked a lot of my training in the past and that's when I do the best, you know? Yeah. I think this is going to drive people to do the same thing. You just start taking care. It's like that with anything in your health, non jujitsu related, the more you're focused on it, like with diabetes, like I know my blood sugars, I'm dialed in with that type of stuff, you know, but there's so many moving parts with all this other stuff, you know? Totally. And, you know, sh- stress, stress of life, stress, it's a big family part of stress. It. It's a big part of recovery. Yeah. You know, it's going back to what we were talking about, being able to shift over, put it, being able to, and I train this with my athletes, but being able to shift over, into that parasympathetic state and getting your heart rate down. Like I can almost tell you now when I train, I've been doing this for so long. I can almost tell you exactly where my heart rate is just cause I'm so in tune with how my heart's beating when I'm training. Yeah. I can almost tell you exactly as I'm recovering, how fast I'm recovering and where I'm at because without even looking this? at my monitor. Yeah. Because yeah. I've been using this and, and, and you, you look know, at the data. Yeah. And so yeah. like whenever I, you know, an athlete comes to me, um, to tie this all into how I'm using this as a way to improve people's conditioning, because that's really what people want. Like they're what, what I'm, I don't want to say selling, but what I'm helping people with is, is their conditioning f- to, to compete, which is yeah. what people want. But what I'm, what I'm really doing and what I'm really trying to get people to do is I'm giving them the tools and I'm giving them the ability to interpret a lot of this stuff, and I'm giving them the app, and I'm giving them the, the, the wearables to be able to track their entire and improve their entire lifestyle. Yeah. Because when you can see that the training that I'm doing, I'm getting a decrease in my resting heart rate. That's great. When you're all, – all of the measurables that we've talked about, but, you know – People want to compete better, and so that's what I'm, what I'm helping them do. But yeah. I use this same stuff, you know. When I'm, you know, I I've put it on my Instagram. I'm doing Master Worlds. I don't know how I'm gonna do. I know that one thing's not gonna happen is I'm. I sure as shit know I'm not gonna gas out. Yeah. And win or lose, I might get out teched by somebody. I might get out pointed. Somebody might out technique me. I have no problem with that. 
but one thing that's not going to happen is I'm is I'm not going to get it. You'll be in good condition, yeah. And so the way that I use that is for a new athlete that comes on board for this, I go through a testing week. I test their entire cardiovascular system. I look at their heart rate recovery. I look at a one and a half mile run test. I look at a twelve minute, uh, twelve minute run or a cycle test. Um, all that stuff has norms that people should be in, and you then you use that. Now I have the game plan on things that we can improve. Best bang for your buck. Let's fix that, and then let's retest in like six six or eight weeks. Yeah. See where we're at. You know. That's, and so that's cool, man. That's going to be it's, that's it's, probably exciting too as a coach it's and, super, and, and it's, the person using it. You got to see all this totally. progress or, yeah. And it's measurable. I mean, yeah. and so I have them do the exact same test using the exact same equipment mm-hmm. and then it's like, let's see. And so, uh, you know, not going in too deep into uh, the systems, but like the physiological systems. But I know like for me, I have a, a, a huge hole in my, uh, lactic capacity and how I shuttle lactate, um, which is basically like when you're, um, when you're in basically in like a really intense high rate of work for a longer duration, mm-hmm. like where you're, let's say you're doing, um, uh, I don't know, like, uh, let's take an exercise like weighted step ups for 10 minutes. Right. I mean, that shit is hard, but that it's like tons. Like I'm just, it's concentric, uh, which is, it's a particular type of, um, contraction. It's like this contraction weighted over and over and your muscles just build up so much fatigue. Yeah, exactly. They're producing so much lactate and you can train your body to, um, shuttle that lactate and use that lactate better. So you build a better capacity under high work rates of stress or high work rates. Yeah. How does that affect the jiu-jitsu mats? Well, when you're passing for 30, 40, 50, 60 seconds on somebody, you're doing the same cardiac capacity as that same mm-hmm. exercise. So you can train those different physiological systems to get better. Yeah. And so then you take that over onto the jiu-jitsu mats and you just dial it in further. The, you, you use the same drills, use the same techniques, and you just do it in a sport-specific way, which is... Uh, coming up in about three weeks is the f- next phase that I'm going to enter. So I'm just developing, 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 and then I'm going to take this same stuff, put it into terms of of jujitsu drills, and then my last three to four weeks before in camp are all going to be like um, sports specific drills. So nice. it turns that it turns that uh, turns really it turns cardio into conditioning that's how you do it so that's dope um, and it's all data driven and yeah. you're m- tracking recovery i'm seeing you you're you're seeing that even on my data i'm i'm seeing that that wave mm-hmm. hrv goes down because i'm under stress then i recover so i know exactly how i'm how i'm handling everything it's just so pretty awesome is there is there things you can uh measure the recovery itself as well so I know some of these things like you could enter, let's say you did cryo or something, or let's say you did get a massage or something that would move the number some way. It'll move your HRV score. Right. So you can yeah. enter those inputs manually as well? Like the things that you're doing? Yeah. No, it's just going to measure it through your HRV score. You, as long as you're doing those recovery modalities, it will register So it doesn't, it. It doesn't uh, register though the event. Mm-mm. No, it'll register the activity, but the actual HRV is just the distance between your heart rates. It's gonna, it's the best score for like. So if you're if you're training hard and you're doing cryo and you're doing these recovery modalities, yeah, you should be shifting back over into parasympath- parasympathetic, and you should see that reflected in your HRV the next day. Does that make that's, sense? That's exactly what I mean. But does it does it actually say the what you did? Can you track that? Like cryo or whatever. In, in, so yeah, is actually, that the activity you can? You can yeah, in, in Morpheus, you can write down, you can put notes on things. Mm-hmm. So like, let's say uh, you do a manual entry, or let's say, let's say that I took my HRV in the morning and I go through my four-question questionnaire. At the very bottom, it's got a note section. Okay, yeah. so I can put spot, tr- I can put like total body cryo yesterday. And then, okay. like, 
when you when you're going through and looking at this data, you can see the notes. You can see your, all your training events. Yeah. And then like you can be like, okay, I did th- I did cryo. I did this. I yeah. did this. I did this. And so then you you start to see like you you should be able to start to see your trends right on that stuff based on a subjective at this point it's just a subject not a yeah. subjective but it's just a correlation of a note yeah exactly. so it doesn't n- necessarily have like any kind of I don't even know what the result the reading would be but I, t- I so for example uh, one of the athletes I work with I don't remember what wearable he's using but it's a sleep tracker so I don't know if Whoop mm. does. Probably does Whoop, Whoop does sleep. Yeah, Whoop does. I think sleep. it's Whoop, but he it has a lot. Of, he gets a lot of data, and yeah, he, you could see on his app, and it showed like he was doing week to week, and he he started doing cryo with me, and he in 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 on the damn graph, it was cool. Like this is where he started doing two times a week of cryo, and his sleep score just went through the roof. Like he started mm-hmm. sleeping tremendously better just from that. And he's like, I didn't change anything else. I wanted to see what the he he wanted to see what cryo was going to do for him. Mm-hmm. And I said, Well, one of the things it's going to do is just take down your inflammation. People report that they sleep really well. Yep. It's kind of like if you go in a hot sauna, those thermal or or like an ice bath. People always report back they really relax. You get that blood circulation of the mm-hmm. blood, and you really sleep well on those days. It's actually the number one thing people say about our business when they return. They're always like, That first time I did it, I slept like a baby. I mean, yep. to a T, so many, and I never even promoted it before. Now I promote it all the time. I'm like, it's, the proof is in the pudding. I've had hundreds of people tell me this, yep. that it, I don't really notice. It. I do cry all the time, but I don't have a problem sleeping either. Like I, when I hit the bed, I'm like, I can just, I'm just crashed out. Yeah. But I know a lot of people that they actually use cryo to help them sleep now. Some people just can't sleep. But my point was, is really. So I'm sure that app is going to take in more inputs. Maybe this is a better example because my my example was if you see the trend and you see like by the end of the week, you're needing to really have a couple days of recovery. Just sitting there, I'm sure that it's tracking your HRV, right? Um, If it's whoop, I mean. No, I'm talking about Morpheus. Yeah, Yeah, Morpheus Morpheus won't do it throughout the day. It's one time. One time in the morning. One time or, or whenever you want. Or whenever you want. So you yeah, can add just, additional inputs in there. No, no, it w- it won't allow you. It's, it's a daily it's a, thing. It's a one time daily. Okay, That's so it. let's say you took so that was my point is if you're getting to Saturday and Sunday and your score isn't where you want it to be, what would you do the next week and how do you track that? I guess it would be a no or Yeah. Whatever I did. I I this week I only sat on the couch or I slept all day or whatever. Maybe I went for a walk the following week or the week prior. So you, that's what I'm saying is how do you make those decisions on what you're doing for the recovery side? Or is it just, no, I'm not training as hard this much this week. And that will, well, in, in turn, no, totally, change that number yeah. in the end. No, totally. I, I get what you're saying. For me, or that's like my, a future, a future, probably they're probably going to develop more and more inputs like that, yeah, I would say. That, I do know for a fact, here's what I do know from Joel Jameson himself is they are doing, they're soon to be, they're soon going to allow manual entries. So if you're doing jujitsu or if you're doing whatever, they're going to allow manual entries into Morpheus. So I know that's coming, okay, cool. but it's not, it's not in there yet. So what does it do now? Coming. It just tracks it as exercise? Yeah, it just tracks it as exercise. So whenever I do my, whenever I wear my heart rate monitor for jujitsu, I just track it as cardio because it, it basically is just cardio. Oh, and then if you do like a weight workout, you just have a different category. So it's just yeah, basic strength, categories yeah, right now. There's like strength, there's strength yeah. training, uh, cardio, or mixed. So yeah. and that's how I. Oh, hundred yeah. percent. It's going to literally so, have jujitsu in there at some point. Oh yeah, especially. I mean, these guys are they work with a lot of combat athletes. Yeah. So it's coming. They're just like. It's new. It's, it's this stuff's yeah. all relatively new. Yeah. The other question I had is like, like you mentioned before, let's say you go uh, walk your dog. Do you only wear the chest strap for the heart, like jujitsu or working like strength training, hard workouts? Like how do you get the additional input of a walk? Is it because you said you used your phone sometimes for the yeah. walk? Does that, d- how does that come in as data? Comes in as data for for this one to, on the change uh, of the HRV. It just it, 
Yeah, it'll well, it'll change your. Uh, so for one, that data comes in through steps. It monitors your steps, or if you really want to get accurate with it, you can monitor. You can track that as if you're wearing your chest strap, uh, and you really want to know everything about that workout. You just track it as a new workout, so you can track as many okay. workouts as you want throughout. Okay, the day. cool. That's kind of um, what I was getting at. Otherwise, yeah, it just so you, comes in as like a as activity, an, a, an additional activity. Yeah, and that's so, not that is is or isn't an, it doesn't because it's not it's checking your heart. It's factored into your recovery, your overall recovery score. Your overall recovery score for Morpheus is all these. So it's sleep, HRV, activity, and uh, training. So it takes all of this data. Okay. And it's algorithm, and then it calculates everything plus all the things, how you're feeling, you know, how much, all, all the stuff that we've already talked about. Right. And it calculates this. It's very lifestyle based, um, but cool. You know, when you're when you're looking at these things, you're training people have work stress. It should be lifestyle. Your recovery should be a lifestyle based thing because it's not just training stress. It's work stress. It's kid stress. Yeah. It's whatever other stress you're going under that stuff all shifts you over onto this other side of sympathetic activity yeah and how and it affects you how on both much, and affects both, you on both ends yeah exactly so personal life affects you just as much so that's right men- mentally it, you know so that's how so that's uh, to answer your question if you want to take your dog out for a walk if you got a setup like i do where it's just tracking your steps in your phone um, it just tracks it as steps and activity. If you really want to know what your heart rate's doing during that and you want to see it, you know, you just track it as a new mm-hmm. cardio workout, put your phone in your pocket, let Morpheus run, and then you have a new workout. So, nice. and you'll, and it, 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 either way, however you do it, it's still going to factor into for your recovery score. So, if you get everything right after you're done logging, after your activity is over or you're logging that recovery workout, However, you want to do it, you you can watch your your mm-hmm. recovery score change based on on those things. Nice. So it's 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 pretty great. I, it's exciting, man. I can't wait to see more exciting. and more results from your your athletes and yourself, and see how this run to the Master Worlds goes. And well, I can't guarantee wins, and I can't guarantee that uh, I'm not going to run into somebody better than me. But I sh- I 100 percent guarantee. That I will not gas out. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's part of so, it, right? You still got to train jujitsu. You still got to be good. You still got to work your technique. But this is going to help do all that. But to be quite uh, honest, this is. Uh, to be quite honest, this is. Um, you know, haven't competed in a while since before before COVID. So um, I tried and tried and tried to find a tournament to kick the the dust off with. Couldn't couldn't come up with anything unless I wanted to fly to Charlotte or something. Yeah. It's like that is not. Not doing that um oh, and hey. i was like you know what that, here's the thing who cares if jump if, back yeah, in jump back into jump, the, the deep, jump back the deep in, end jump back in jump back into the deep end I'm, i know i know how these tournaments run i know how to do it but mm-hmm. i figure if i can outpace somebody i'm gonna be constantly in the fight if yeah you know what i mean sure. if i can just if i can just be a little energizer buddy and not have to worry about how hard I push or managing my managing my my energy because I'm afraid I'm going to gas out later in the tournament or later in the match. Yeah, I'm going to be in I'm going to be in the in the match, and if I lose, I lose. But at least it won't be because of cardio. So that's like my uh, that's how I'm having to <laughs> put it in your telling, mind. That's what, that's what I'm telling myself. <laughs> well, it's just going to benefit you greatly for your training. Yeah. I mean, if you're running on that that a high octane towards the end of training, your training is going to be better. That's you're right. gonna have, you're gonna be hitting your techniques better, you know. I mean, yep. this it all goes together, so it's not just. I don't think you should look at it that way, where you're gonna make sure you get this one piece. You're a skilled jujitsu athlete already. This is gonna increase everything. The only thing that yeah. you're gonna have is the nerves of not competing for a while. But that's it. You've done Master Worlds. I mean, it's it's another match for you. You're, it's another match. It's a yeah. challenge for yourself. You're gonna you're gonna also have all this cool tech and a story behind it and really see yeah. some good results one way or another. You know, you're going to, even if you, like you said, you don't, you, you lose the first or second match, at least you'll know what that, what did this do for you? What did this run yeah. do for your, and, and obviously a tremendous amount of insight into the next one, 
How am I going to do the next one? You're going to feel even better, you know, less pressure and then more, more conditioning. Like you said. Yeah. 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 I'm really excited. I am too, man. That's yeah. It's, it's it's coming up. It's kind of cool. You know, it's, uh, uh, it's a nice opportunity. I feel like it's a nice opportunity. You know, I've grown a lot since I competed at Brown Bell last time. So it's a nice opportunity to display some new stuff I've been working on. And so not really, not you know, it is what it is. It's going to be fun. Yeah, for sure. It's a great challenge. Uh, props to you for getting out there. So lastly, this software and wearable is part, did you say it was part of your program? So if people sign up for this in particular, they get, they have, they, that comes with the cost of admission and all that stuff. And Correct. you set them up, you do the training, all that good stuff. Yep. Yep. Awesome. So I'm already writing the custom programs for people. Um, have all these techniques already you know in my in my my wheelhouse or in my 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 toolbox already um basically when somebody comes to me and they're like i'm tired of gassing out on the mats Mm -hmm. we talk make sure you're a good fit make sure you're willing to because the car the cardiovascular system is different than you know a person i've said this probably on the podcast a person can can lift a couple days and get some really good results over time i mean but the cardiovascular system is different it you have to you know four days a week is really bare minimum that you can do to, to train your heart um, to see good results. It needs lots of volume. Your heart needs lots of volume training, yeah. and that doesn't mean hard, high intensity training. That means cardiac output training, getting your meaning, getting your heart to pump more blood to the vascular tissues. You yeah. want more mitochondrial, more mitochondria, which are energy producers throughout the entire vascular network. You want more mitochondrial density, so that means that they can pr- produce more energy. Um, so these types of these are the types of things that when you start looking at training your cardio, making your heart healthy, it needs lots of volume to make in order to make that happen. And yeah. so it doesn't mean you're getting on a treadmill and running as hard as you can for an hour. It means it might mean you're sitting on a bike for get your heart rate four, up. 40 60 minutes sitting between 100 and 100 and 120 to 150 which is not a, a i mean it's 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 a pace that you and i can have it's a doable. conversation yeah. at, you know what i mean but that is how you train cardiac output and that cardiac output again meaning how much blood your 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 heart can pump out to the tissues that is the basis of your cardiovascular system so you can't have these higher level techniques I was talking earlier about lactic capacity. You can't have these, you can't have cardiac power, meaning like sustained power through a long duration. You can't have that if you don't have cardiac output. Right. So when you start looking at how can I make these changes, the very beginning thing is get your heart to pump more blood and get your heart healthier. And that comes through cardiac output training. So it's not necessarily getting on a treadmill and hitting it as hard as you can. It is a lot of times lower consistency and lower volume and then finding where you need specific help and training those systems. Awesome, man. Sounds great. I hope that was informative for some people. That was great, man. I'm I'm stoked on it. It sounds really cool. So I'm um, pumped on it too, man. I I I I I keep putting it on my Instagram that I have tried all of these wearables i've yeah. tried whoop i've tried biostrap i haven't tried aura i think that's the only one that i haven't tried i tried another one called anyway it doesn't matter and i think this is the most comprehensive system that's awesome uh, with with and uh, not just comprehensive but with accuracy that's the thing that i like about this most is that um the the hrv is is it's taken once a day it's standardized it gives you something to track and you've got a, a good heart rate monitor to be able to like to track your your jujitsu and your cardio and all this stuff and then you start Mm -hmm. putting it all together and then when you uh whether it's through me there's a couple other people excuse me that are doing this um but you get a coach they have a coaching app they're able to see all of this stuff and be able to coach you through um the entire training spectrum awesome it's, it's pretty legit all right guys follow wes 
the BJJ Physio on Instagram, Facebook. He's going to be, it's a good way to see some of this. I'm sure you'll be sharing more clips. I love it. Yeah, yeah, I've got more coming. I've got more coming this, this week. Cool. He'll he's so. share some screenshots of the, the tech, the data. You know, I'm sure he's going to jump on and do some videos and explain what he's been going through at some point. Uh, follow him, the BJJ Physio. Reach out to him. And if you want to get get your cardio right, this is, this is the way to do it, man. This is like the forefront of it. So yeah, I get on board. It. Anything else, Wes? That's all I got. Um, drop me a message if you like. If you have a question about this stuff, um, uh, something specific, I can't ask. I can't answer anything specific to a person, but um, I can give you some general guidelines. I'm I'm happy to answer questions and DMs. I always try and give out free information. So if you can't find it on my Instagram, shoot me a DM. And I'll be happy to answer your questions. All right, guys and gals, have a safe week of training.